You know, there's a reason why the Gordon Ramsay's of the world praise this dish. That, and also you can stuff it with cheese and deep fry it, so. Okay, so today we are making risotto. Not just any risotto, but the most basic yet proper way that we possibly can. Not gonna overcomplicate it, we're just gonna look at the basic flavors, put them together, and take our time. Give it the love that it deserves. And then when we're done with it, I'm gonna show you what to do with the leftovers. Which if you can't already tell, it has to do with deep frying and cheese pulls and all that good stuff. So with all that said, let's make this. Shall we? Okay, risotto can either be extremely simple or unnecessarily complicated. So let's choose the, the good one. First off, quick note, make sure to cut your vegetables nice and small. So here you'll need one to two shallots, which will be peeled, sliced in half, and very finely diced like this. I like it where they almost disappear in the risotto. Same thing with the three cloves of garlic, except I just very finely mince mine. Now in a medium sauce pot, add four and a half cups of chicken stock, place it on the stove over medium high heat, and bring it up to a boil. As soon as it reaches a boil, turn off the heat and just leave it there so it's nice and hot, ready for use. Guys, keep it simple. Just keep the darn freaking chicken juice hot, all right? Next, get a medium sort of large-ish saucepan. Heat two to three tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat until shimmering. Then add your shallots and garlic, season with salt, and saute that for about three to four minutes or just until the vegetables begin to soften. Add one and a half cups of arborio rice. Yes, I use arborio. Oh my gosh, Josh, what about carnaroli? Well, how about you just zhuzh, okay? Anyway, toast the rice for about 30 seconds, stirring often. Then add half a cup of white wine and a pinch of saffron thread that have been lightly crushed. Turn the heat up to medium high and boil that until it's about 90% evaporated. Then turn the heat back down to medium. Now this is the moment of truth that everyone gets all freaked out about. Man your gosh darn stations. You got your base, you have your hot chicken stock. Now begin by constantly stirring your base. Add a nice half cup ladle full of your hot chicken stock. And as I said, constantly stir, do not stop stirring. Look, guys. Breathe, relax, just get a nice glass of wine or sparkling grape juice if you roll like that. Play some nice music and do not stop stirring. Doesn't have to be vigorous. Don't death grip the spoon. Just relax your hand and stir without stopping. As soon as that liquid has been absorbed by the rice, add yet another half cup ladle full of your chicken stock. Keep on stirring, tap dancing to jazz and dreaming about your future. Then just rinse and repeat that process by adding stock. Stir, stir, stir until it absorbs. Add more stock and keep on doing that until the rice is cooked to an al dente and no crunch is left. Now once it's done, please ensure that the consistency is not too dry. I'm tired of seeing weird overabsorbed risotto. Should be like the rice is suspended in a thick custard that holds it all together, but not runny necessarily. Once your beauty is done, turn off the heat and stir in two tablespoons of unsalted butter until fully melted and emulsified. And a third cup of grated grana padano or parmigiano cheese. Once that's done, add a thick mound of your risotto in the center of a flat plate. Give it a few taps on the palm of your hand to get a nice, even, relatively round circle on your plate. Hit it with some additional grated parmigiano reggiano and fresh cracked black pepper. And look, if you're feeling mad luxurious, you can also add a hefty drizzle of aged balsamic vinegar. This one is a truffle balsamic from Du Bois at Regalis. Now let's taste test this. So we have a saffron risotto. I actually uh, started to run out of stock and I used a little bit of ramen that was in the fridge and I gotta say, I'm already excited about that. Finished it with a little bit of black truffle balsamic from our friends at Regalis. Uh, shout out to them, by the way. That's not sponsored, okay? Stop saying it is. They're just homies and they send me stuff because we're homies. Anyway. Oh my God, oh my God, this is ridiculous. This embodies what every human heart desires during the winter times and yet there's a quality of luxury to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have much to say other than this is a perfect food. This is the simplest way to make it. You can add all sorts of flavors to it, but this is the baseline you want. It doesn't just stop here. What do you do with leftovers of risotto? Long story short, it ends with cheesy fried balls, so. Let's do that. Okay, we have our risotto, but let's talk about arancini, or arancini, one of the two. Also known as fried risotto balls filled with melty cheese and dreams. To make these, you either are gonna have to have leftover risotto, otherwise you'll have to make a new batch specifically for this recipe, which is completely worth it, and I recommend it. Now spread that all over silk pad or parchment, set on a baking sheet, cover it with plastic wrap, and let that chill in the fridge for at least one hour or up to overnight. Once it's nice and firmed up, get some of your solidified risotto, shape it into balls that are about two inches thick, and then flatten them into a nice thick patty. Then repeat that with all of your risotto and try to keep those balls even. Then get some low moisture mozzarella and cut it into three quarter inch cubes. Again, keep them even, just like your balls. Take a risotto patty, place a cube of mozzarella, that's for the uh, New Yorkers out there, in the center and gently wrap the edges around and crimp it shut so you have a ball with no exposed cheese whatsoever and do that with all of your risotto patties. Now these guys are gonna get breaded katsu style, which is very simple. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour in one bowl, two to three eggs beaten in another bowl and a package of panko breadcrumbs in the final third bowl. Now run down your station in this order. First 
First coat every last inch of the ball in flour, shake off the excess, toss the coat fully in the egg wash, and last, toss in the panko breadcrumbs so you get a nice crumbed up looking ball. Geez, that sounds gross, but it's really a good thing. Once you're done and all of your balls are nice and evenly breaded, heat up a pot filled with about two and a half inches of oil. That's fry oil, like vegetable oil or something like that. Once it reaches 350 Fahrenheit, add about three to four risotto balls at a time, do a nice little dance, and let that fry for six to eight minutes or until a deep golden brown. Fish them out of the oil with a spider and drain them on a wire rack, set over a baking sheet, then fry the rest of your balls. And those are your beautiful, get ready for this, arancini. How did I do? Huh? Italians? All right, that was disrespectful. I'm sorry. Serve these bad boys with a nice marinara or tomato sauce of your choice, and let's see that cheese pull. Oh, yes. Yum, yum. Papa want in his tum tum. Anyway, let's taste this. It is time for the arancini. It's literally just fried risotto balls stuffed with cheese, and you just give it a little dunk. Oh my God. Look, I've had arancini before, so it's no surprise to me how right in amazing this is. It's crispy and crunchy on the outside, creamy on the inside. You've got that beautiful risotto, which if you spent a long time on, the love will reflect in this. And it's all brought together by the tomato sauce. That's all I have to say. So I think we need an opinion from somebody who's never had one before. Yay, Poop Man is here! First impression is, um, wow. It's moment. like one of those things where there's like, what do you even say? It's I don't good. think I can say anything except just continue eating and y'all need to make this. With that said, risotto, two different ways. You've got the basic risotto. You gotta have that skill set. You can't skip that as a cook, ever. And then you have what to do with the leftover risotto. There's no other way around it. You gotta make the anancini. Goodbye. Ah. You wanna know what else has both creamy stuff and crispy balls in it? B-roll. <laughs> Guys, and that is it. So we made our risotto two different ways. Well, really one way and then we use the leftovers, but the point is this is such a versatile dish. It's not just like, oh, you got some rice and some stock and you no. no. You can use different kinds of liquids. It doesn't have to be chicken stock. It could be beef stock. It could be a ramen base. It could be pho broth. You can do something crazy with this. The point is risotto is something amazing and that should be treated with respect, but also maybe break the rules a little bit. Do something fancy. Use this moment to learn it. Practice it. Try the balls as everyone should and go on your merry way. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you.